Uh, very warm welcome, my dear viewer, to the program Ask the Ministers of God right here on your most favorite channel, MBCI TV. And we are delighted that you found time to be with us on tonight's discussion. And tonight we've prepared for you a very captivating topic, the topic on conscience. What is conscience? How does it work? How does it function? And uh, what are you supposed to do? Even maybe when uh, you feel that maybe your conscience is directing you to do something or not to be able to do something. And we've prepared a very, very, very wonderful panel to help us to make sense out of this particular topic tonight. On board is our resident minister on this particular show, Apostle Dan Gishi. Well, thank you so much, Mtumishi. Karibu sana. Thank you very much, our viewer. You are welcome to this program. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to have you. And you're also being joined by Pastor John Uthudua. It's also a pleasure to have you, servant of God, tonight on this particular show. Thank you, Magichu. Welcome, viewer. Karibu sana. And you're also welcome to follow us on our Facebook page, MBCI TV. Feel free to interact with us, give us your feedback, and we ensure you a very amazing discussion tonight. Apostle Dan Gishimu, mm. uh, just to begin with, uh, bring us to perspective when you talk about uh, conscience. Conscience is something that God created us with. And I would like to define it as a capacity that somebody is able to know what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. That capacity is inbuilt in a person. That's why sometimes when somebody does something which is very bad, yeah. sometimes he also feels bad, as bad as the thing that he has done. Mm -hmm. When you do something good, you feel quite okay, comfortable, you have peace mm -hmm. because you have done the right thing. So that means every human being has conscience. Every human being has conscience. Yes. Yes. Wow, well, that's wonderful. Pastor <laughs> uh, Yes. Uh, it's something that God has given every human being to underscore its importance in how we conduct our lives. Yes, it is inherent in our wiring. As he was creating all the features, he also created the conscious because he wanted uh, the human being to do the right thing and to know when you're doing wrong. So it is somewhere in us. It's like a policeman of your life that God has given you who tells you when you're going out, uh, uh, when you're not following the the will of God part time. Like we are told they keep law and order. Yeah. And that means also God has his uh, do's and don'ts that he has given us. So he has also given you a policeman who tells you you're over speeding, uh, don't, don't overdrive, blah, blah, and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, as Apostle says, it is inherent in every human being. It's inherent in, in, in every human being. Yes, mm -hmm. And maybe one would want to find out where, where is it found? <laughs> 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 in a human being. <laughs> well, we can say a human being mm -hmm. has emotions. Yes, yes. So we would say is inherent mm -hmm. within the soul of a person because the wow. soul of a person mm -hmm. has emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, when you react to something, uh, that probably something good, mm -hmm. you know, you are expressing your emotions. When you mm -hmm. also react to something that is not right or something that is bad, mm -hmm. you are also reacting in a way to, you know, some emotions. Mm -hmm. Of course, you are expressing some emotions. For example, if I do you something wrong and then I realize my conscience tells me what you have done to me, get you, the words that you have spoken to me, get you, are not right. And then I come to to you, mm -hmm. and then I apologize. I say, Mangichu, I'm very sorry for what I I told you. Mm -hmm. You know, your conscience is very much at work. Mm -hmm. You know, that means your conscience is not dead. <laughs> it's, 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 it can be able to tell you mm -hmm. when things are right uh -huh. and when things are wrong, wow. and actually using or taking the necessary steps mm -hmm. to amend. Mm -hmm. whatever is not right. Wow. And Apostle, you've talked about uh, when your conscience is dead, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that, that is something we'll actually even want to uh, bring into context later on. Mm -hmm. But when you talk, about, when you look at somebody who is saved mm -hmm. and somebody who is not saved, mm -hmm. do they have conscience operating in the same way? Uh, what I would say is somebody who is saved, his conscience is actually under the control of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit also comes into, mm -hmm. into play. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you are born again, and for sure you have done something that is not right, 
the Holy Spirit will convict you. Mm. So when he convicts you, mm. then your conscience wakes up, you know, to whatever wrong that you may have done. Oh. And this, of course, will lead you into repentance. Mm. I remember Paul a lot of times, you know, he spoke about conscience. Mm. And that my conscience is good. My conscience is clear. Yeah, hey, my conscience <laughs> mm. is yes. clear. Mm. You know, that means uh, whatever he was doing, he was so clear about it. Mm -hmm. And we know also that Paul, being a believer, he was also spirit-filled. Mm. So whatever, you know, sometimes even he would castigate mm. the Corinthians because of their behavior. And then he would realize I think I've gone too much. <laughs> mm, mm. And he would kind of, you know, conscious say, look, I didn't mean really to do this. Yes. I meant to do this. Mm. Which means there was a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And then mm. his conscience realizes mm. and probably he can also lower his tone mm. because sometimes he would realize, mm -hmm. look, uh, some of them are still babes in faith. Mm. And babes in faith, of course, you know, make mistakes. So all I need is to lower my my voice mm. and correct them and bring them at par mm. at a certain level of wow. maturity. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, you, you, you share the, the, the same uh, uh, perspective with the Apostle, uh, the distinction between conscience for uh, someone who is born again mm -hmm. and for one who is not born again. Yes, the difference is clear. Of course, the, the health of the regenerated soul or regenerated spirit. When one is not born again, is unregenerated. You remember Paul says we were dead, when we were dead in sins. Mm -hmm. He was talking about himself before he got regenerated, before he went through the experience of new birth. Mm -hmm. Now at that point, when we were dead in sins, our conscience, though resident, they don't function the same. Mm -hmm as one who is regenerated. Okay. Yeah, you, Paul, Apostle has just mentioned that Paul has talked so much about conscious. So you'll hear him talk about dead. You'll talk about defiled. you talk about weak. you talk about pure. And you talk about good. So they function differently depending on the health of your spirit man. So when one is regenerated and strong in the in the inner person. Right. Also, it determines the health also of your conscience. Mm. At, um, at, some, at some point, he talk about, um, talks about one that is seared with a hot iron. Mm. A red hot iron that has seared it. Um, it means it has, it is, that this one cannot function as the same way a good conscience mm. uh, will function. So the, the maturity, the spiritual maturity of a person also determines the health mm. of your conscience. Mm. Now, let's think about the defiled ones. It gives the wrong signals mm -hmm. okay, because it is defiled. Mm -hmm. Then somebody will, will steal and defend himself. Mm. He, I found it uh, not well kept and I also needed it. And God knew I needed it. So the conscious is defiled and it's not giving the right signals, the correct signals. Mm. And then, uh, then there's a good conscious, a, a pure conscious. Wow. So the, the more one grows spiritually, mm. the better you are, your, your conscience gives the right signals. Oh, give the right signals. Yes, yes. And, 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 and that would really uh, uh, maybe give the indication as to why maybe for someone who is not born again, mm -hmm. uh, they find themselves maybe in sin, and maybe, maybe without maybe an opportunity, uh, maybe to get in the word of God, still finding themselves continuing to do, uh, mm -hmm. maybe what somebody maybe who is born again mm. would really, uh, not really been, a, or, or, or desire actually to, to partake. Yes. In fact, for the non-believers, the signals come after once have already committed something like, like Judas. Let alone he thought it was very long what I did after. After he had already done that. So they are, it's late. Unlike when one is born again, mm -hmm. even before you do it, something is telling you, stop it. Sure. Stop it. And the more you get to it, the more they'll shout, the louder it shouts uh -huh. at, at you. So people remain in sin and unbelievers because it's late to give the signal. Mm -hmm. Because it's not well functional, mm -hmm. like the one that of, of 
the one who is already regenerated yes. and who is in Christ. So why people live in sin without uh, feeling anything is because the state of their spirit man yeah. determines the state of their conscious, yeah. though it's still there. When one has done something is when one regrets. Why did I do it? I, I wish I didn't do that. Uh-huh. Now it's coming late to give the signal. Uh-huh. Yes. It's coming late to give the <laughs> signal, Apostle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, and, and, and that is very interesting as uh, Apostle Google puts it, uh, for, 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 for the believer, mm. uh, the, the, the need, mm-hmm. therefore, to guard their conscience. Mm-hmm. Yes, you have to. Imperative. Yes, it's very, very, very important. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you cannot rule out the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will always keep your conscience sensitive mm. to what is right and what is wrong. Mm. And uh, when you remain sensitive to what is right and what is mm. wrong, mm. is very, very unlikely that you will go the wrong way. Because before you even move or if you move a certain steps towards that, before you get there, the shouting even becomes louder to your conscience. (laughs) And so what you do Mm -hmm. is to withdraw. Mm -hmm. And then you, after you have withdrawn, Mm -hmm. and then you see the victory, of course, Mm -hmm. your conscience again uh, rejoices. And because also you brought the Holy Spirit, (laughs) someone would say, so when, as as a believer, when... Uh, your conscience speaks to you. Mm. Can it be the same as the Holy Spirit speaking to you? No, this is different. Uh-huh. Remember the Holy Spirit is given by Christ. Okay? Right. The Holy Spirit is given by Christ. Yes. And why is he given to Christians? Mm. Is given to Christians as an enabling person. Maybe this, like I said in another program, <laughs> The Holy Spirit is a subject by itself uh-huh. because it's always good to see the Holy Spirit yes. as a person. Wow. I think there was a program that was talking about mm. Tejos. Mm. The Tejos are all over. Although yeah. we don't see, the, see them. Mm. You remember like the angel, I mean like the chariot of fire mm. that was surrounding um, uh, Elisha mm. and uh, his servant. But you know, the servant could not see. Mm. So the only person that could see the chariot of fire was just uh, Elisha. And mm-hmm. Elisha p- prayed for him, mm-hmm. for his eyes to be done, what? To be opened to be so open, that he sure. may see mm-hmm. the chariot and therefore he doesn't have to worry. Mm-hmm. So this is the same thing. The Holy Spirit, you may not see him Nagichu, right. like you are seeing me. Exactly. But he's very much alive. Uh-huh. He's a person. Real person. Real person. And he works. And he even reveals things. To Christians. Wow. That's why it is always imperative when a Christian is born again mm-hmm. to desire yes. the infeeding of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And this is what happened at the birth of the church during the Pentecostal day, mm-hmm. according to Acts chapter 2. So when the Holy Spirit came upon them, you know, they were completely transformed, they were completely changed. Mm-hmm. Right. So, which means even their conscience. Mm-hmm. Was, was aligned. Was aligned. Mm. <laughs> you know, somebody like Peter who yeah. used to payuka yeah, you mm. know, saying anything. Mm. You know, he was changed. He was changed. Why? Because okay. he was under mm. the control of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So he was guarding him. He was guiding him. Mm. And he was putting controls mm. on his conscience. Wow. So, uh, <coughs> Absolutely that's, fabulous, that's Apostle. What I would say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I want to take a short break on this particular point. But when you come back, Apostle, you had mentioned about having a dead conscience. Yes. And uh, how dangerous is this? And what leads to one having a dead conscience? Uh, Pastor Google, uh, you'll also contribute on that. Our dear mm. viewer, remember we are discussing the topic on conscience and I uh, want to look at how it affects us as Christians and even uh, how it affects those who are not yet born again. And to help us, uh, make sense out of this particular discussion. I'm having uh, Pastor Dan Gishimu and also Pastor John Dogo. Don't go far away. We are coming back after this short break. 